All right, so today we're going to talk about um, direct variation, which is another form of function, but it's a very specific kind of function. So our objectives are to answer the question, what is a function, to write direct variation equations, and then interpret what those equations mean. So first we're going to start with vocab. I've only got two words for you. So you can write a formula for direct variation using the functions y equals kx, or y over x equals k. Both are the same. If you divide the first one by x on both sides, you get the same thing. So this formula states that except for 0, 0, the ratio of all input to output pairs equals a constant, k. Um, and it will always pass through 0, 0. This is called your constant of variation. So first we're going to look at a table. And what we do um, for a table, since our constant Remember that our constant equals y over x. We're just going to take our y values and then divide by our x values. And if they're all the same, then it is constant. So 2 divided by 1 is 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. Since the constant is same in all of them, then this is a direct variation. Let's take a look at the second one. Let's do the same thing, y divided by x. So I have 4 divided by 1 is 4, 8 divided by 2 is also 4, 11 divided by 3 is 11 thirds, that is not 4. So this is not a direct variation. Okay, I want you to go ahead and do these, see if you think they're direct variations or not. So for the first one, when you divide them all, your k is negative 7, but the second one, they're all different numbers, so it is not a direct variation equation. Alright, now by looking at equations, we can determine if they are, remember they have to be in that form of y equals kx or k equals y divided by x. Um, we cannot add or subtract anything from these in order for them to be direct variations. So for this one, if we get y by itself, what would we have to do? We'd have to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So y equals 7 thirds x. Is that a direct variation equation? It is, because our constant of variation is 7 thirds. So this would be a direct variation. What about this one? Okay, to get y by itself, what we have to do? Divide everything by 7. I get y equals 2x plus 1. Because we have this plus 1 on the end, this makes it so that it is not a direct variation. So that is not a direct variation. Okay, I want you to go ahead and pause. See if you can figure out um, whether or not these are direct variations and what our constant of variation would be. For these, I just went ahead and rewrote them as y equals um, and got it as a term and then x. So the first one, y equals negative 5 thirds x. Our k, our constant variation, is negative 5 thirds. And the second one, same thing, k equals 1 ninth. All right, so here we have um, an actual problem. So you're going to have probably quite a few of these says suppose y varies directly with x and y equals 9 when x equals negative 15. What is y when x equals 21? Okay, we can set these up in two different ways. Um, I personally like using the equation y equals kx, but you can also do y over x equals k. This one makes more sense in my mind, but you can do it either way. Okay, so I'm going to say that y is 9, x is 15, so 9 equals k times negative 15. In order to get k by itself, I would divide both sides by negative 15. Then I get k equals negative 0.6. The same way on the other side, 9 over negative 15 equals k. Oops, equals k. That still equals negative 0.6. Okay, so what is y when x equals 21? Well, I'm going to say y equals our constant variation, negative 0.6, times our x value, 21. So you just go ahead and take 21 times negative points, and you get that y equals negative 12.6.
So that would be your answer. Okay, I want you to go ahead and try this one. I know you can do it. Hopefully you got your answer is 60. All right, here's where we're gonna use like a story problem. A salesperson's commission varies directly with sales. For every $1,000 in sale, the commission is $85. What's the commission on $2,300 in sales? So what we wanna find is for every, um, for our standard $1,000 sale, our commission is $85. So what is that constant that remains true? So I'm going to take this equation, y equals kx, to find k. Um, but first I'm going to substitute some stuff in. So I'm going to let c be my commission, how much I make. And that's found by taking the sales times some constant. So I'm just going to substitute those in. So if my commission is a value I don't know, um, Oh wait, my commission is $85, pardon me. That constant variation is what I don't know, times the amount of sales is $1,000. So I take and divide both sides by 1,000 to find that constant. And 85 divided by 1,000 is 0 .085. So if I have $2,300 in sales, I'm gonna go back to this. My commission is 0 .085 times the sale amount 2300 you take and go ahead and multiply those and I get my commission is hundred and ninety five dollars and fifty cents not too shabby okay go ahead and try these um, I'm gonna want you to compare these with your partner and see what you come up with And last one, um, I think this is the last one. When we graph direct variations, do you remember what I, point I said they always go through? They will always, always go through the origin. So if you graph it and it goes through the origin, you automatically know that it's a direct, direct variation equation. So let's go ahead and graph these. Uh, here we go. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and go by twos. Okay, so if I pick points, I'm just going to go ahead and start by just picking points. Pick the point 0, 0. Well, x, y. Here we go. If I pick the point 0 for x. If I plug in 0, y is also going to be 0. What if I plug in 2? Well, 2 times 3 fourths, we can reduce those, is 3 halves, or 1 and 1 half. What about 4? If I plug in 4, um, I get 3. Same for opposite, negative 4, negative 3. See how that works? So I have 0, 0, 4, 3, negative 4, negative 3, 1, 1, and 1 half. Oops. That's kind of off a little bit. It doesn't really... I didn't do a very good job spacing my um, graph, but you can see that it's going to go through 0, 0. At least it should. Hopefully your graph looks a little bit better than mine. Okay, for this one, let's pick points for negative 2. Let's see, I like, um, we know it goes through 0, 0. How about 1, negative 2, and 2 would be negative 4. So 1, negative 2, 2, negative 4. We know it goes through 0, 0. It's also going to go the opposite way. Ah. Pretend that's a straight line. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, and then go ahead and finish up this lesson check. Your homework is 2-2, and I'll see you tomorrow.